warm welcome everyone to gj tech school grand journey into learning civil engineering basics and concepts we are going through the concrete technology series now we are discussing concrete mix design this is session two methodology of concrete mix design as per indian standard code 10262 so video one or session one would have been theoretical part much of a boring or elaborated content for many of you but this is very important where we are learning the mix design process so watch carefully till the end and let's begin mix design proportioning methodology so in order to understand better the concrete mix design whole process we need to understand these following steps the step one we need to have a clear idea about design variables what are the variables that we are going to compute or calculate in the whole design process and what are the factors that are influencing or required for computing these design variables so test for quality and compliance requirements the tests are conducted for each ingredient without testing the ingredients cannot be blindly used for as an ideal material for the given concrete mix design uh, requirement hence each cement or type of cement aggregates and water aggregates and also the admixtures are tested for their particular parameters and they should comply with the respective codes as stated in the respective standards that are speculative information for designing there are certain informations which are primarily required for mix concrete mix designing without certain data we cannot assume and, and arrive at a particular unique concrete mix hence what are the primary data or informations required before proceeding or actually designing a concrete mixture is understood in step 3 step 4 design computation and references for each design variables references for each design variables the overall concrete mix design methodology what i am teaching here confirms two particular codes that is one code that is concrete mix design mix design code 10262 2019 which we are following along with this the uh, is 456 also will provide certain informations and it certain aids in particular design ingredients corrections and adjustments after we have arrived at a particular quantities of concrete ingredients after mix proportioning there are final adjustments and corrections need to be done on site uh, for in order to maintain the same mix proportioning without altering the concrete properties or final concrete uh, fresh properties hence what are such corrections need to be done on a regular basis on site should be studied in step 5 finally we will solve a problem in order to understand or actually design a concrete grade in illustration So let us understand each steps one by one step number one is what are design variables there are eight design variables that need to be concentrated that is first one is target mean strength and what are the controlling factors of each variables what are the factors that are controlling the target mean strength are grade of concrete so when we say a grade of concrete that is 28 days expected compressive strength of concrete is to be equal or higher than the grade of concrete we are designing for example if we are designing a concrete grade of m25 m is a prefix in indian standard code in certain other codes the prefixes might be also sc25 so 25 grade concrete should have uh, have or achieve after 28 days a uh, strength higher than 25 or at least 25 hence target mean strength is the strength that is targeted so hence it will be always on the higher side to the grade of concrete air content depends upon the maximum size of aggregates and the grade of concrete what is cement ratio what is cement ratio depends upon the factors such as target mean strength or the cement type or grade and the cement content in the co or cement volume cement grade there are opc grades as per indian standards as 33 43 or 53 
and when we use PPC and PSC, how should we find out the water cement ratio uh, will be understood in the computation step. Water content, slump, maximum size of aggregates, water cement ratio, admixtures and cement content do alter or vary the water content. Cement and cementitious content, the cement and cementitious content that is SEMs or mineral admixture altogether where it depends upon water cement ratio and the percentage of uh, cement replaced with SEMs and maximum size of aggregates and exposure condition where the concrete to what type of climate or environment or temperature it is exposed on site uh, decides the cement and cementitious material content. Admixtures is also depending upon workability, SEMs and water content. Aggregate contents. So volume of aggregates depends upon the maximum size of aggregates, water cement ratio, SEMs or cement content. Coarse aggregate proportion. Coarse aggregate proportion also depends upon water cement ratio, size of aggregates and the shape of coarse aggregate. So the coarse aggregates, if it is angular, rounded or if it is of irregular shape, uh, conforming to the different types and sources, it will also alter the coarse aggregate proportion required for the concrete. Fine aggregate grade. So, fine aggregate grade is given in the uh, IS 383 from zone 1 to zone 4. So, whatever the fine aggregates we are using, first we have to decide which zone of fine aggregates. So, these zones are classified based on the particle size and their percentage in the taken sample of fine aggregate. Step 2 in methodology is tests for quality and compliance requirements. So what are the codes that all the ingredients should satisfy after they have been tested? Tests for quality and compliance requirement for cement. Cements are tested for physical requirements and chemical requirements. They need to satisfy both. Chemical requirements are tested in the chemical laboratory and they are confirmed with the chemical ingredients percentage present which will also be provided by the man apart from that physical requirement tests are as such fineness tests are conducted on cement soundness test is conducted on cement setting time of cement is established estimated compressive strength of cement is calculated and transfer strength is calculated apart from this physical requirement test density and consistency tests are also con conducted on cement so for SEMs, all tests conducted on the cement are or do apply for the supplementary cement issues materials also. But one particular test additionally we need to conduct on the mineral admixtures or SEMs that is drying shrinkage test because depending upon the fineness and particle size or surface area of the SEMs, there might be an increased shrinkage in the fresh concrete. So that limit should be confirmed in the laboratory before they are used as the replacement of cement so tests on aggregates there are two kinds of aggregates used for concrete coarse aggregate and fine aggregate all the tests that are that need to be conducted on the aggregates will confirm with the indian standard code 2386 1963 so respective parts of this code can be referred for different tests sieve analysis density water absorption specific gravity and soundness these five tests are commonly conducted for both coarse aggregate and fine aggregate and in this very important is to keep in mind sieve analysis or particle size distribution i'll tell the importance of this in the next slide so apart from this specific tests conducted on each aggregates are coarse aggregates are tested for mechanical properties that is crushing value stone value impact value abrasion value crushing strength of uh, coarse aggregate and 10% fines of coarse aggregates. All these tests are uh, conducted for complying or checking the mechanical requirements of coarse aggregate. Apart from this, there are chemical tests like alkali aggregate reactivity and there is an observation as uh, which is done. There is petrographic examination, understanding the microstructure of the concretes. These two tests are not regularly conducted for each particular sample or uh, of aggregates that is brought to the plant for batching but when the sources of aggregates are changed in the batching plants or when we change the type of aggregates definitely these two tests are also important to be conducted on coarse aggregate apart from this if there are any deleterious materials what are deleterious materials that are clay slums or organic matters or any foreign particles present in both coarse and fine aggregates can be estimated as per 
again indian standard codes uh, apart from this very important test is that is shape and size test that is for understanding the elongation index and flakiness index that is percentage of particles limit that is allowable uh, in the aggregate sample which are more flaky and more elongated so this is very important test shape test and size test apart from this fine aggregates are also having specific particular tests that needs to be conducted like surface moisture of fine aggregate motor making properties bulking of sand fineness modulus and silt content so silt content has a limit so if there are more fines uh, passing through 75 uh, micron then the fine aggregates need to be changed or it becomes un uh, disqualified as an ideal aggregate hence silt content needs to be tested fineness modulus is tested bulking of sand so when the sand is having moisture uh, we can understand that uh, there will be a volume increase in sand so in order to have the exact volume of fine aggregates in concrete when they are mixed with other ingredients we need to have the, this estimate of how much is the bulking of sand motor making properties gives an, a crushing value or the compressive strength test performed on fine aggregate by mixing it with cement and water surface moisture is used for doing moisture corrections in aggregates which i will explain in the adjustments and corrections so as i said c1 analysis is very important for both the aggregates coarse and fine aggregates so is383 code gives the table 7 for coarse aggregates so coarse aggregates when they are sieved upon different uh, sizes of uh, sieves they need to have particular amount or proportion of the aggregate sample to be retained or passing from each sieve that is as given here when there is a single sized of aggregate okay, we can see the values of different proportion to be retained or passing on each sieve is provided depending upon the maximum size of aggregate that is maximum size of aggregate for a single sized aggregate is from 10 mm to 63 mm similarly when there is the aggregate is of graded type having different sizes in the aggregate sample then we can refer this particular table where it gives the values of different amount of particles that needs to be retained on different sieve sizes for 12.5 mm maximum size of aggregate to 40 mm maximum size of aggregate so we need to decide what is the maximum size of aggregates that we are using that is if it is 40 mm 20 mm 16 mm then we need to refer the particular values given here below given here below for the particular maximum size of aggregates so this is a very important compliance requirement if the aggregates doesn't satisfy this particular table then they need to be resized or received or resourced similarly we have two more tables for the uh, aggregates uh, particle size uh, compliance for fine aggregates the same is code 383 provides table 9 where the grading is provided so if we are using different grades for example if we are using gray zone 2 type of aggregates means when the aggregates are sieved upon the sieve sizes from higher 10 mm to the lower 150 micro micron the grade 2 zone here the percentage of the sample to be retained or passing on each sieve should lie between these limits given as per for the respective sieve sizes similarly table 8 the coarse aggregate for mass concrete so mass concrete is a concrete uh, uh, which is having a comparatively lower grades compared to the high strength concrete or standard concrete so when mass concrete is utilized one point is that we go for a higher size of course aggregates so in that cases we can go for a very large sizes up to 150 to 80 mm size in that cases the aggregates are sieved upon from 160 mm sieve size and the percentage passing should come um, with this following amount on each particular sieve sizes similarly for large medium and small size of aggregates used for mass concrete the respective sieve sizes and the percentage retained or passing is provided here so this compliance requirement is very important to be satisfied before the aggregates are classified as ideal for the use in concrete mix design
design stipulations or the data required for the next designing. So general data or general information required before mixed designing the concretes are tabulated in these four columns as per serial number. The first one number first one is grade designation. So we need to know which type of our grade of concrete we are designing, and different grades are given in IS456 table 2. And we can nowadays we are designing from a very low grade of M10 to a very high grade of M80 plus up to M100. Type of cement need to be specified clearly what kind of cement to be used by client or by the designer nominal maximum size of aggregates in mm that means they need to provide us a clear idea about what is the type of concrete or grade of concrete or if it is a particular grade of concrete also sometimes the clients are very preferable about using the particular size of aggregates only sometimes for a mass concrete some clients would prefer 20 mm as the maximum size of aggregates also depending upon the usage of concrete for different structural elements in the structure minimum cement content and maximum water cement ratio these two are used for checking or confirming with the cement content and water cement ratio that will be computed they need to be checked against these two minimum and maximum values these values are provided in table 5 depending upon the exposure class given in table 3 of IS456. Workability will be provided. Information about what should be the maximum slump will be provided. That means it is 75 mm slump or 120 mm slump. If, the, if that information is not provided, we can just refer that from the clause number 7.1 in IS456. Method of placing concrete, manual, shoot type of placing and pumping. So depending upon the type or method of placing of concrete, certain variable will vary that we will understand during the understanding computation of variables degree of site control is classified as good fair poor etc so what type of uh, quality we maintain on site during the casting of concrete decides good fair and poor type of aggregates needs to be specified that is what kind of aggregates are we using for mixed designing that is are they crushed aggregates or rounded aggregates in order to confirm the angularity of the aggregates and size of aggregate maximum cement content maximum cement content is given as per is456 is 450 kg per meter cube or in particular project cases it is to be increased when we use the mineral add mixtures but the opc content maximum should not exceed 450 kg per meter cube in any instance if that is mixed with mineral add mixtures the overall cementitious content can be higher to this value but opc content should always lie below this value chemical admixture type plasticizers air and training for plasticizers so what type of chemical admixtures are we using needs to be specified clearly after the general information or data we understood also there are second type of data required that is the test data what what is required for mixed designing so test data the cement used the cement used depends upon the opc grades and each grade complies to 33 grade 43 and 53 grade to these following is codes and it should satisfy all the requirements specified in these codes so then specific gravity of cement is required similarly specific gravity of all the other aggregate other ingredients are also required that is chemical admixtures scm fine aggregate and coarse aggregate specific gravity is required water absorption so water absorption is tested in laboratory for coarse and fine aggregates moisture content moisture content also is required or calculated for coarse and fine aggregate sieve analysis so sieve analysis values are required in order to comply to the compliance requirement as we discussed before and also it is required in order to create the type of aggregate particles gradation So overall all the information required before we are moving into concrete mix design can be consolidated in this particular table that is material data test data and other details so all the information can be grouped upon under these three headings that is material data is required test data is required and other details required material data is required are for all the materials used or all the ingredients used that is cement what is the type of cement and cementitious materials SEMs what are the type of SEMs used and what course do they have to comply with course aggregates nominal maximum size and type of course aggregate used that is either rounded aggregates or other aggregates is required fine aggregate type is required and the grading what grade complies to 
admixtures, what are the type of chemical admixtures that needs to be added is specified. In our test data, we can observe aggregates are always tested for moisture content, water absorption, C1 analysis data for aggregates are required. Specific gravity is required for all the ingredients. So we can remember the information required better by following this particular table. Other details are workability is required, method of placing and degree of control. So in this way, we can consolidatively remember what are the information required. Other details are workability, method of placing and degree of control. And common detail is specific gravity. Common test data is specific gravity and particular course aggregate data is, is moisture content, water absorption and C1 analysis. These three are important for aggregates and commonly uh, all the multi ingredients are tested for specific gravity and material data required or what are the types of ingredients used and what is the maximum and minimum cement content and what are the nominal maximum size of aggregates. So if we remember these things then at any given question in the uh, exams or when you are into designing any particular type of concrete we are thorough with what are the informations required part of concrete mix design computation as per 10262 2019 so before understanding computation or calculation of each design variable uh, we should know the basic classification or general classification of concretes as ordinary concretes which are having grades lesser than 25 mpa standard concretes are concretes which lie between 25 to 60 mpa in 28 days compressive strength and high strength concretes are the concretes having grades or the strengths higher than 60 mpa so references for each design variables references for each design variable is very important table for anybody who want to refer or cross verify, we can follow this table very quickly and easily. Target mean strength is referred from table one and table two. Here, all the tables which is not mentioned as IS456 are referred from 10262 and any references of made from IS456, I would have highlighted it with the IS456 mark. So target mean strength, calculation of X value from table one, and calculation of standard deviation from table 2 approximate air content in percentage of percentage volume of unit weight of concrete is directly taken for maximum size of aggregates so if we know maximum size of aggregate we can refer for approximate air content in table 3 6 and 11 depending on different types of concretes water content also referred from three different tables depending upon different maximum size of aggregates adopted in mixed design. References for each individual design variables continuing water cement ratio is calculated or referred from figure one which provides a graph. So we'll understand the graph. Table five gives the values of maximum value of water cement ratio in order to verify from the value obtained from the graph whether it is exceeding the maximum value or not. Cement content from table three and table 5. So table 3 provides the exposure conditions in IS456 and table 5 gives the minimum cement content. Volume of force aggregate referred from table 5, table 10 and table 13 for different maximum size of aggregates and for different water cement default values. So all the values referred from table 5 is for water cement ratio of 0.5 and table 10 gives the values for water cement ratio 0.3, table 13 gives the values for water cement ratio 0.5. If the design water cement ratio is different, then there needs to be adopted a correction. Admixture, table nine. So table nine recommends the different dosages of mineral admixtures and materials for high strength materials. So the percentage and limit of mineral admixtures that needs to be used is given in that particular table nine. And also the chemical admixture percentage is prescribed by the manufacturer. We just follow the dosage is prescribed by different type of chemical admixture manufacturer. Design computation, the first design variable is target mean strength. It is computed from these two formulas and the values which is having the higher value among from these two formulas are taken up as the target mean strength. So when does target mean strength vary? 
or when we have to put a correction upon this calculated value of target mean strength is very important so here first we'll understand the table one gives values for different grades of concrete as we can see here and the table two gives the values of standard deviation for different grades of concrete so corrections so if there is increase of 20 percent of target strength needs to be adopted if the aggregates are 80 mm and 25 percent for if we are using the aggregates of the maximum size as 150 mm as per clause 9.2 that is when the rounded aggregates are used like in for mass concrete we need to increase the target mean strength by 20 percent and 25 percent but this increased target mean strength is not used for the other design variable computation please i'll repeat this increase in the target mean strength which we adopt is not used for other design variable calculation this increased value of target mean strength is only used for confirming the cube test or compressive test of concrete only this needs to be kept in mind The next variable is air content. So there are two ways of uh, arriving at what is the entrapped air content required for while designing the concrete. The first one is as per the table uh, referred previously from the tables for respective maximum size of aggregates. The other way is to trial computing on site. So when we are designing a mix, for example, a mix uh, grade of for M25. The similar M25 is designed previously also in the same uh, site or batching plant then we can use those particular uh, values of air content used previously a uh, minimum of five similar mixed data are required in extreme cases where concrete is exposed to freeze and thaw it can be taken as per IS 456 clause 8.2.2.3 maximum air content so when there is freeze and thaw is likely expected to affect the concrete then the values of air content is prescribed as per IS-456 in mass concrete to pertain or we in order to confirm the durability concerns air content adopted generally is 3% for maximum size of aggregates used 150 mm if maximum size of aggregates used is 80 mm it is 3.5% these values can be increased up to 1.5 to 2 percent when there is a procedure of wet sieving on 40 mm is followed before the cube compressive test is conducted sometimes when compressive cube compressive strength test is conducted the direct sample is not used it is once sieved upon the 40 mm sieve and the passing concrete is used to catch the cube and then test for the compressive strength in that cases the air content initially we can increase up to 2% for the given values. So next design variable is computation of water cement ratio. The water cement ratio is directly referred from figure one, uh, which is which gives a graph of three curves indicating different types of PC cements and uh, Y axis referring to the 28 days compressive strength of concrete. Table 8 gives the value of water cement ratio for high strength concrete grades along with water reducing admixtures when they are used. Table 5 gives the maximum water cement ratio. So the computed values from figure 1 or table 8 will be cross verified with table 5 values and the lower of value is considered for mixed designing. So the graph in figure 1 looks like this where curve 1 indicates OPC 33, curve 2 indicates OPC 43 cement grade and curve 3 indicates OPC 53 cement grade depending upon which type of cement is adopted in mixed design the respective curves can be referred and x-axis indicates the respective water cement ratios. What are PPC or Portland slag cement is used by default PPC and PSC has no specific grades mentioned in Indian standard ports and by default we will refer the curve here this curve number two for PP, PPC or PSC type of blended cements used in concrete mix design we will refer this particular curve number two so this is table five which gives different minimum cement 
values for maximum water cement ratio for different exposure conditions referred here as mild moderate severe very severe and extreme and it gives the value of minimum cement content to be adopted and also it specifies the minimum grade of concrete that needs to be adopted for particular exposure conditions and the maximum free water cement ratio it gives values both for plain concrete and reinforced type of structures So next variable is water content computation. Water content is referred with respect to maximum size of aggregates used in concrete mix design from tables 4, 7 and 12. All these tables give the values of water content for a common slump of 50 mm and for angular aggregates. So if we are using rounded aggregates, there is a correction or adjustments need to be made for the values referred from the table before using them directly. So what are the adjustments required for uh, water content are number one is rounded aggregates. So maximum size of aggregates, rounded aggregates used in concrete if it is 150 mm, 10 kg of water content to be reduced, 80 mm, 15 kg to be reduced, 40 mm, 20 kg to be redu reduced. And the correction for slump uh, is at a rate of, if a slump is varying at a rate of 25 mm plus or minus then there will be an increase or decrease of 3% of water content in made for the values obtained from the table so chemical admixtures tend to reduce the water content from 10% to 30% depending upon the type of chemical admixtures but this value can be used in order to generalize as 1% of reduction in water for as for unit weight of concrete that is if the unit weight of concrete is uh, assumed as 23 in general then the maximum reduction of water from the chemical admixture can be taken as 23 percent so this is table 4 an example of how we take the values of water content in kg for different maximum size of aggregates is given here by default all the tables will give in well the values for a slump of 50 mm that needs to be kept in mind we need we should not forget to apply these corrections otherwise we will arrive at a different erroneous results in the final mix proportion quantities next computation of cement content cement content in kg is directly calculated by simplifying the water cement ratio formula so it is given as water content in kg divided by water cement ratio so both water content and water cement ratios already we would have computed then it is easy to obtain the cement content by this formula but there needs to be applied a one single correction for cement content calculated by this formula that is when we use the mineral admixtures SEMs to replace cement depending upon what percentage of cement in overall cement tissues content is replaced by the mineral admixtures we need to increase the overall cement tissues content up to 10 percent but this is also decided on site by trial and error method that is when fly ash is used more than 20 percent of overall cement tissues content then there needs to be a correction applied and if ggbs is used more than 30 percent as a part replacement to cement then again overall cement tissues material content calculated can be increased so next is mineral admixtures content so table 9 of is10262 gives the values or the maximum and minimum dosages of each scms that is can be used for replacing cement fly ash 15 to 30 percent gram ggbs 25 to 50 percent metacoline 5 to 15 percent silica fume 5 to 10 percent so we can see metacoline and silica fume more re reactive hence their percentage is restricted to a very less proportion whereas ggbs we can use up to 50 percent we can replace cement apart from this nowadays research on concrete and special concrete are also having different replacement proportions to cement and we are 
and those type of special concretes are also doing well commercially chemical admixture content so chemical admixture what percentage of chemical admixture in percentage to volume of concrete design to be used is prescribed by the manufacturer itself the manufacturer who is providing the chemical admixture will describe the maximum dosage or beyond which the concrete would have certain side effects or symptoms like segregation and bleeding so generally on site it will be followed as per the prescription of the manufacturer or for theoretical calculation or the calculation purpose in solving examination problems admixtures are considered usually as 1% of cement content depending on the standard concrete and it also varies for high strength concrete up to 1.5% and for mass concrete or usually it will decrease up to 0.5% next is computation of coarse aggregate content or coarse aggregate volume in concrete so before calculating the coarse aggregate volume for volume of concrete that is designed table 5 table 10 and table 13 gives the values or we need to refer the values of coarse aggregate proportion from table 5 10 and 13 which gives the proportion of coarse aggregate volume for total volume of aggregates whereas total volume of aggregate is the volume of coarse aggregate plus the volume of fine aggregate so total volume of aggregates also can be calculated by subtracting the volumes of all other ingredients like cement water air and admixture from a unit volume of concrete that is one so coarse aggregate volume in meter cube of concrete can be obtained by multiplying the coarse aggregate proportion obtained from the table by the unit volume of total aggregates that is total volume of aggregates ta some adjustments need to be made for coarse aggregate volumes calculated so coarse aggregate is indirectly proportional to water cement ratio so whenever there is an increase of increase or decrease of water cement by 0 0.05 unit then there will be an increase increase or decrease inversely to the volume of coarse aggregate by 0 0.01 unit that means when water cement ratio increases by 0 0.05 then we have to decrease the volume of coarse aggregate by 0 0.01 respectively and the second correction or adjustment is for method of placing when the method of placing is pumpable and non pumpable concrete to remember when there is non pumpable concrete there is no adjustment to be made and it is prescribed in the initial stipulation data that the type of concrete casting is pumpable concrete then we need to decrease the volume obtained from the table or calculated by 10 percent the table values are also given for angular aggregates so as the angularity decreases when apart from the crushed angular aggregates if we are using the rounded aggregates then again we need to make a correction for coarse aggregate content so rounded aggregates tend to decrease water content so rounded aggregates also will decrease the volume of coarse aggregate content table values are for aggregate angular crushed aggregate that's over so fine aggregates other than natural sources having fi higher fine contents that is higher fine contents are defined as the volume of fine aggregates uh, in the sample passing through 150 micron sieve so if they are higher or on the higher side as higher side of the zone table given in is383 as we discussed before then there need to be a decrease in volume of course aggregate so once coarse aggregate volume is obtained fine aggregate volume can be computed easily because coarse aggregate plus fine aggregate volume makes up the total volume of aggregates in concrete so fine aggregate volume in concrete can be estimated from these two equations that is one minus of coarse aggregate volume in concrete in turn gives coarse aggregate proportion from table into unit volume of total aggregate so this becomes the volume of coarse aggregate for unit volume of concrete so 1 minus of coarse aggregate volume will give the fine aggregate volume for unit volume of concrete or else we can use 1 minus of the volume of all other ingredients including the coarse aggregate volume in concrete will give the fine aggregate volume so 
we need to calculate the aggregate weights as we are obtaining all other ingredients till now in terms of weights so how do we manipulate or convert from weight to volume or volume to weight is by use of specific gravity so this is the importance of finding out the specific gravity test results initially before starting the mix design so mass of aggregates course or fine in terms of kg is given by the volume of aggregates multiplied by their respective specific gravity and multiplied by 1000 so when the mineral admixture type of uh, microfiller type of mineral admixtures are used they have more uh, silt content higher then the fine aggregates also can be reduced because they cover up or take up the function of fine aggregates to certain extent so in that case the fine aggregate content needs to be reduced based upon the trial and experience of the design engineer uh, mix design engineer on the plant so this needs to be kept in mind is the only correction for fine aggregate content so finally speaking upon the last step corrections so corrections on adjustments the this correction and adjustments is uh, different than the adjustments we made for each individual uh, variable while computing their values as these are the corrections what i am bifurcatively explaining it in the sub separate topic is these corrections are made on a regular basis in order to ensure the concrete mix proportion quantity and there should not be any deviation of or alteration to the final concrete product design as per the mix proportion quantities designed that means there should not be any variation of properties of concrete uh, by the change of uh, certain parameters what are they correction to mixture water and aggregate moisture so now you would have understood that is aggregates are kept stored inside in the open environment so when there might be a moisture fluctuation in the aggregates as when they are brought from the site will be tested for one particular batch of concrete and the next batch of concrete might be casted after few days in between there might be a rain or an increase in temperature where the moisture would have been fluctuated so we can't arrive at a common value for this uh, for this and also the values computed for the coarse aggregate volume and fine aggregate volume are based upon the saturated surface dry condition that is most commonly not achievable on site so there are two conditions of aggregates on site that is wet condition and dry condition when the aggregates are wet they tend to reduce the water in the concrete mix in the concrete mix uh, that means they contribute more water from them and when the aggregates are dry uh, obviously they try to increase the water demand or increase the water content so we not we should not understand this as the regularly we are altering the water content but while mixing there would be a note of these corrections increase or decrease made on the particular day on the plant hence how do we calculate is water content contributed by wet aggregates is given by mass of wet aggregate minus the mass of saturated surface dry condition aggregate the mass of saturated surface dry condition aggregates is what we have the weight calculated in the previous step so that needs to be deducted from the mass of wet aggregate so mass of wet aggregate in kg per meter cube is obtained from the mass of saturated surface dry condition aggregates multiplied by 1 plus free surface moisture divided by 100 so again we need here free surface moisture so that's why we understood in initially fine aggregates are tested for surface moisture so free surface moisture in percentage is obtained from the total moisture in the aggregate minus of their particular individual water absorption whether they are coarse or fine aggregates the same common formula applies so when the aggregates are in dry condition there will be an increase in water content so what is the water demand or increase in water demand in kg that needs to be applied uh, while mixing the water is given by mass of the saturated surface dry condition aggregate minus the mass of dry aggregates so mass of dry aggregates in kg per meter cube is obtained from the mass of 
aggregates in saturated surface dry condition divided by 1 plus water absorption divided by 100. So that is for dry condition we require water absorption and for wet condition we require free surface moisture. You need to remember these two particular points while doing this particular corrections. So that completes the methodology of concrete mix design procedure as per 10262. Any doubts or any other clarifications kindly don't forget to comment and like the video share it to your friends and students and subscribe for my next video where i'll be solving the illustrative problem as per the is 10262 and also watch the previous video where i have elaboratively discussed the theoretical aspect of the ingredients in concrete and their functions in concrete mix design so knowledge enlightens the greatest heights of mindfulness thank you very much for watching thank you